And so I devised a new model whereby I kind of divided from target identification to IND into four, five different milestones. For example, in vitro, there's a milestone. If you, if you have a target, how do you know whether it works or not? In vitro itself is a milestone. Then in vivo, in animal proof of concept, is a milestone. And I don't want peanuts in the sense, uh, you know, $50,000. I, I have a milestone of half a million dollar for in vitro, one million dollar for in vivo. Like this, by the time I give them an IND molecule, I earn $10 million. So with the result that last year with this model, my Bangalore company had a 100 crore turnover and a 36 crore profit. And this year we expect it to be 150 crores and uh, clearly 65 crore profit because there, there's not much of uh, additional expenditure. So it has, I have uh, been able to get into a very profitable kind of thing. And I went even one step further. I had uh, three or four scientists. I was closing down my Atlanta lab. They said, if you start something on your own, not connected with the Dr. Reddy's, we would like to join you. I said, what is your budget? What are your ideas? Now they gave me the budget and the ideas. It was well within my reach. And uh, you won't believe that we have a proof of concept in animal at half. By the time I that uh, that uh, time I spent only half a million, and both are known drugs. So there is no there is not going to be any surprise because the safety is beyond a question. Both are known drugs. So I have a new model. It's a virtual model. So similarly, for example, if some of your smart uh, scientists come to me and say, I got this idea, they don't have to start out of San Francisco. They can sit at their home, their ideas can be, you know, I will give them contacts where the experiments will be done. Very, very cost effective. And uh, I will give a, for example, in my Atlanta company, I only hold 66%, 34% I gave it to my scientists very generously. <laughs> because it is they who are important. So this is a new model emerging out of it, and I have a feeling that this is the best. A uh, couple of last questions on uh, your personal take. As, as an entrepreneur, uh, what do you think are the strengths required? Because not every scientist could be turned into an entrepreneur. Not every person could be an entrepreneur. It's a different breed. Um, then there's a debate whether they're born or they become entrepreneurs, and you could take either side. But according to you and your experience, if you were to pick a couple of streaks of personality, what do you think are those to become a successful entrepreneur, which is an absolute requirement? Yeah, they, they, they must have their feet firmly on the ground, you know. A scientist can go ari. He can have fancy ideas, <laughs> which can drain any amount of money into. <laughs> the ocean but <laughs> but suppose he is practical for example when this carious therapeutics which i am talking about in atlanta of all the things he said i am going to work on alzheimer disease everybody knows it is very very risky and the first thing i said is uh, would they give me your budget i know that it is risky so i must know how much to burn <laughs> When I saw the budget, I said, this is something which I can play. And I played on that. And the reason why I was after this girl is that they were also into Alzheimer's. They had a molecule which they licensed to Pfizer. Pfizer paid $200 million upfront. <laughs> and it failed in phase three. And most unfortunate is when we were about to make a deal, that day the news came out and nobody would touch Alzheimer's for the time being. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Reddy, you know, Thai has created this enormous platform. It's people like you who came to this country, achieved great successes, and they decided to come together and give back to the community. 
and now ties in 55 chapters, 13 countries, inspiring hundreds of entrepreneurs worldwide. And you see the evidence today at the conference. These are 17 of the largest in the world. What is your take on Thai and Thaicon's experience? No, the, the first feeling as I was entering the, the ballroom was that, oh my God, if Thai was there when I became an entrepreneur. <laughs> Uh, to that extent, the pain would have been a lot lesser. You don't know how much pain I went through, you know, getting a loan of uh, 50 lakhs from IDBI. It's a government organization. And I would go at 9.30 in the morning. He would keep on asking questions up to 12.30. Then I had to go back again at 3.30. He will repeat same thing in the evening <laughs> up to 6.30. It was going on for one week and somebody took pity on me. And uh, he said, why are you asking same questions? You finish it off tomorrow. That is how my loan came after 10 days instead of. <laughs> And just for 50 lakhs here, you know, this, this, this is the time when someone is impressed with an idea. It can come in 24 hours. Money can come in 24 hours. That is the, that is the le thing of least importance for an entrepreneur now. As a very successful entrepreneur, a trailblazer and legend for many entrepreneurs in India and around the world, what is, the success is a very generic term, but I'm trying to imply it to you in terms of your wealth, your fame, uh, and your recognition around the world. Because when I see people like you, uh, it just inspires us even more. Because most of the people we run into in Silicon Valley are like you, very prosperous, very successful, yet very humble and very giving back to the community. So I don't see uh, the ego um, or uh, the other attributes which shouldn't be associated with that. So. Do you think it comes because of the family background? Do you think it's because in the later years, you, like you said, you have your feet firmly on the ground, you, you face reality differently? It's very important, I think, for people to understand how you take success in stride and yet be the human that you are and inspire people. I think uh, it comes with the maturity in the sense. For, for example, uh, in my active days, I I bought a Mercedes S500. <laughs> there were only two other people in the country, Dhirubhai Ambani and RP Goenka, and I, three, and I was very proud of that. Last year, my son was saying that, why do you buy this uh, Henry, uh, Hyundai Accord? There's a beautiful Mercedes which has come now. I said, uh, it costs one crore, I know. Why don't you, you donate that to Nandi <laughs> instead of buying a car for me? <laughs> the, the whole attitude changes, you know. So people talk about me driving a Honda Accord now in Hyderabad. <laughs> they, they ask a question, why is he driving a Honda Accord? But, but don't you think that it's more prevalent in the Indian culture now with this emerging uh, economy? Yes. People have a lot more disposable income. Yes, yes. And more of an opportunity for them to show off their wealth yes. and prosperity, regardless yes. of whether they can maintain it or yeah. not. So I think somewhere uh, there should be this sense of reality that, you know, it's important to do the better things in life, for which I think Indian culture is pretty, pretty apt. And that's what we've been taught all our lives. So, uh, you know, in, in conclusion, I thought, you know, Maybe let's share this with you and get your thought that you know how we can try to inculcate this into the younger generation. I don't. I, I don't know whether we can do it. <laughs> no matter what, <laughs> it should come within the. Okay. Well, Dr. Reddy, it's a pleasure. Thank you so much for sharing your thoughts and your time. It's been a pleasure. Thank you.